Namaste Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschachyate Shatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So now we're on the final verse of the Ishopanishad, text number, mantra number 18, where we're studying Ishopanishad at the level of Bhakti Shastri. Would someone like to lead us in the chanting of the mantra? Hare Krishna. Agnei Supatai Rai Asman. Vishwani Deva Vaunani Vidvan Yuyoti Asmaj Juhuranam Eno Yuyoti Asmaj Juhuranam Eno Uyetam Te Nama Uptim Videma Uyetam Te Nama Uptim Videma Yes, you can read the translation, please. Oh my, translation by Sakivita Samshin. Oh my Lord, as powerful as fire, omnipotent one, now I offer you all obeisances, nothing on the ground, at your feet. Oh my Lord, please lead me on the straight, on the right path to me. And since you know all that I have done in the past, please free me from the reactions of my past sins so that there will be no hindrance to my progress. All right, thank you. So, this is uh, the final section from Mantra 15. So, Mantra 15, 16, 17, 18, they're all praying to the Lord. The Lord, the devotee is offering prayers and we heard in 15 and 16 how the prayer was to remove the effulgence so that we could see the face of the Lord or we could see the form of the Lord and then 17 and 18 is more about praying to the Lord to uh, well, we said Om Krato Smara Kritam Smara, right? That, uh, remember uh, all the sacrifices which I have done for you. Sacrifice, sacrifices meaning that we controlled our senses. We made the attempt anyway to control our senses so that we could concentrate on service to the Lord. So that's the ultimate sacrifice. And we pray to the Lord that He remembers our efforts and we pray that He will lead us on the right path, that we can go towards Him. Alright, so go ahead Prabhu, you can read the purport. By surrendering to the Lord and praying for His causeless mercy, devotees can progress on the path of complete self-realization. The Lord is addressed as fire because He can burn anything into ashes, including the sins of the surrendered soul. As described in the previous mantras, the real or ultimate aspect of the Absolute is His feature as the personality of Godhead, and His impersonal Brahmadvati feature is a dazzling covering over His face. Fruitive activities or Dharma Kanda path of self realization is the lowest stage in this endeavor. As soon as such activities even slightly deviate from the regulative principles of the Vedas, 
they are transformed into vikarma or acts against the interest of the actor. Such vikarma is enacted by the illusioned living entity simply for self-gratification and thus activities become hindrance on the path of self-realization. Thank you. So, Srila Prabhupada is describing different processes by which we can approach the Lord. He mentions about, first of all, Karmakanda, the path of Karmakanda. He said this is the lowest stage in this endeavor. And he describes how a little mistake very easy, he says, it's very easy to make mistakes when you try to follow the karmakanda. Do you remember a pastime like that? In Krishna Leela, have you read a pastime like that? A devotee was doing karmakandi activities and made a little mistake? Uh, hmm? Who? Niga, yes, King Niga, right. King Niga. Do you know the story? What happened? Uh, lizard. He becomes a lizard, like exactly, I don't remember that, but like. Well, he was giving charity, and he was giving very, very wonderful charity. He was the giving cows, I guess, yes. giving cows right. And they were, they, they were not old cows, they were young cows and they were well decorated and with gold and cloth and necklaces and, and he would give them to brahmanas and he would select very qualified brahmanas to take charity from him. So it was really, it was really, but, but his purpose was that he, would, he wanted to enjoy the results of this charity. But one day he made a mistake. One day he gave one cow to one brahmana and then somehow the one cow wandered into other cows and he gave the same cow to another brahmana. And the two brahmanas came and complained that you gave this cow to me. And so the king was in trouble and he could not pacify the brahmanas. He offered them many more cows but they said no. We, I, they, both the brahmanas said, we, we're not taking any more charity. So because of that mistake, he, he got the offense of stealing from a brahmana. So it was a very small, unintentional mistake. But as a result of that, he became a lizard. He became a lizard. Yeah. A, big, a big lizard in the bottom of a well. But he was fortunate that Lord Krishna came there and saved him Trans after, after a long time, after being in the lizard body for a, a while, Lord Krishna happened to somehow, well, the, the, his children were playing with the ball and their ball went in the well and then they looked in the well and they saw this big lizard. So then they told Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna came and as soon as he touched the lizard, then it transformed into King Riga and he, and he explained, King Riga explained what happened. So it was a warning to everyone to be very careful about taking things from others. Anyway, this example about karmakandi activities, it's very easy to make a little mistake and you get so much trouble from it, right? So it's not encouraged here. It's not, it's not, karma kandi activities are also material activities, they're not on the spiritual platform. It's not actually on the yoga ladder. We see in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also uh, for a little while speaks about karma kandi activities to Arjuna, that he encourages Arjuna to fight. He said, if, if you fight, even if you lose, you can go to heaven. So like that, he was encouraging him, karmakandi activities. If you win, he said, if you win, you will enjoy the kingdom, and if you lose, you'll be killed in the battle, you'll go to heaven. 
So that's karmakanda activities. You're thinking about enjoying. So this is not spiritual. Right? So one should be careful about these kind of activities. So we heard in the previous mantra about uh, his feature, the impersonal Brahma Jyoti is covering his face. But and fruit of activities, the, the lowest, as soon as activities, like, yeah, and such we karma is simply for sense gratification, right? Just for sense gratification. So there's no benefit on the path of self-realization. But it mentions that surrendering to the Lord is a, the sure way to get the mercy of the Lord. And it's mentioned how the Lord can burn anything into ashes. We read in the Bhagavad Gita also about the fire of transcendental knowledge. Transcendental knowledge also has a similar effect that it can also burn, the, burn to ashes the reactions due to past sins. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Someone like to read for us, please? Next paragraph. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Okay. Self-realization is possible in the human form of the life, but not in other forms. There are 8,400,000 forms of life, of the human form, what they have culture, presence, the only chance to obtain knowledge of transcendence. Brahmanical culture includes truthfulness, Sense control, forbidance, duplicity, full knowledge, and faith in God. It is not that one simply be proud of his high parentage. Just as being born the son of a big man affords one a chance to become a big man. So being born in Sadhana Brahman gives one a chance to become a Brahman. But such birth rate is not everything. For one still has to attain the Brahminical qualification for himself. As soon as one becomes proud of his birth as the son of Brahmana and neglect the upper qualification of a real Brahmana, he at once become degraded and falls from the path of self-realization. Thus, his life mission as a human being is defeated. Okay. Right. Thank you, Prabhu. So we know from the Bhagavad Gita that there are nine qualities for the Brahmana described in the 18th chapter. Right. So Prabhupada is mentioning here what Brahminical culture means these important qualities. Prabhupada gave great importance to cleanliness. It's a very important principle in Brahminical culture that to keep everything clean. Prabhupada was trained as a chemist and after he began working, after he finished his studies at university, he got, took a job and he was working in a chemical firm. So Prabhupada quotes a chemical equation, a, a very simple chemical equation, which we learned also when I was at school. I remember studying science and they taught us this chemical equation. It, 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 it said, a base plus an acid will give salt plus water. In other, a base is something like sodium hydroxide, an, an acid something like hydrochloric acid. So a base plus an acid, you put them together, they'll react, there'll be a reaction. 
you get salt, sodium chloride and water. And so Prabhupada said like that, he said in the same way a brahmana when he contacts a dirty place he has to clean it, he cannot leave it dirty. And in this way Prabhupada was teaching the devotees the importance of cleanliness. He said if, if you don't keep the place clean then you lose your brahminical qualities. So very important cleanliness and then truthfulness is also another important quality for the brahmana. And we know in the Kali Yuga that it's rare that people are truthful. A lot of things are all based on lying and cheating, a lot of business and a lot of politics is all lying and cheating. But a brahmana is vowed to truthfulness. We know great kings like Maharaj Dasarath and Maharaj Yudhisthira, they vowed that they would rather die than tell a lie. So a brahmana, he should be truthful. There may be some exceptions, there may be some special situation where a life is at stake. The brahmana may have to tell, avoid saying the truth in order to save a life. So that's allowed. But generally, we should be truthful. One of the pillars of religion, right? Samo damas tapas socham. Or, or, or rather, sadyam, socham, dayatapa, the four pillars of religion. Sadyam, truthfulness. Socham, cleanliness. Daya, mercy. And tapa, austerity. And so, brahmanas, they should, come, they should have these qualities. And Prabhupada's making the point that it's not simply birth alone. And Prabhupada often preached like this to people, in inviting people to programs and so on. Sometimes he would, they would invite other people from other temples, from other sampradayas. Sometimes they wouldn't come because they objected, because Prabhupada was making brahmanas out of people who were not brahmanas. But Prabhupada was following the principle which is from the scriptures, that is not the birth. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Chatur, uh, Chatur Varna Maya Shistam Guna Karma Vibhagasha. He doesn't say Janma Karma, he says Guna Karma. Guna Karma, quality, qualities and work, not birth. The birth is an advantage if one is a born in a Brahmin family is an advantage, but it's not enough. You don't become a high court judge just by birth. You don't become a Brahmana just by birth. You have to have the qualities of the Brahmana. So that was big preaching. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada also, he was also criticized because he initiated people, gave them a Brahmin thread to people who were not from Brahmana families or who from, were from low caste families, he gave them, he made them, he gave them the Brahman thread to show that they are at least Brahmanas by becoming devotees. Vaishnava is above a Brahmana actually, but he would give them the Brahman thread to show that they are at least Brahmanas. So making Brahmanas, Brahmana means the mode of goodness. We have to cultivate the qualities of the mode of goodness, very important. Mode of goodness means no passion and no ignorance, getting rid of these lower modes, very important. Becoming established in the mode of goodness, then it's a great benefit. So we're trying to cultivate these Brahminical qualities. Krishna consciousness movement is meant for training all of us and encouraging all of us to cultivate the mode of goodness, to develop the Brahminical culture, Brahminical qualities. In the Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada compares Brahmana and Kripana, right? The Brahmana 
and the Kripana. Kripana is the miserly person. Miserly person, he's got the human body, but he does not use it. He won't use it for self-realization. Just like somebody's got money and they don't use it. They don't want to spend. But the Brahmana, the, the Kripana is one who's got the human form of life and he doesn't want to make proper use of it. So he's Kripana, he's condemned as being miserly. But the Brahmana means one who is generous. He's got the human form of life and he uses it for the purpose of cultivating the higher consciousness, cultivating Krishna consciousness. So this is a very important point. Human life is a great opportunity to cultivate this Brahminical quality, the Brahminical qualities. Sometimes people say, well, what if everybody was to become a Brahmana? <laughs> The world would be very nice, but no, it won't happen. Not everybody's interested. It is said anybody can become a Brahmana if they're properly initiated and trained. Then they can become Brahmana. But not everybody wants, not everybody's willing to accept the training and the initiation. And so there's, it's not a problem. But we do need more Brahmins. We need more people on the higher platform, in the mode of goodness, to protect the environment and to protect the culture and the society and to produce nice, uh, to show nice families, a nice example to others, to inspire other people to take up Krishna consciousness. Okay, we'll go ahead. Marijis can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. In Bhagavad Gita 6.41-42, we are assured by the Lord that the yoga brushes or soul fall, souls fallen from the path of self-realization are given a chance to rectify themselves by taking birth either in families of good brahmanas or in the families of rich merchants. Such births offer higher chances for self-realization. If these chances are misused due to illusion, one loses the good opportunity of human life afforded by the Almighty Lord. Okay, Mataji, do you know what happened? Why is it? It said that yoga brashta, they didn't complete the path of self. They, 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 they fell from the path of self realization. What are some causes of fall down? Too much attachment to the family? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, if one is too much attached to the family, then it may interfere with their self-realization. Yeah, that's an interesting point, could yes. be like that. And what was the other point you said? Bad association. Bad association, right. One, yes, can fall down, bad association. Association, very important. We know uh, when Lord Varaha picked up the earth planet from the bottom of the universe, at that time he impregnated Mother Bhumi. And Mother Bhumi had the son, right? What was the son's name? Bhoma Sura. Bhoma, yeah, Bhoma. And then he, and they trained, Mother Bhumi trained him. They trained him to be a good devotee. In the beginning of life he was very good. But he got bad. Who, whose association did he get? He got the association with uh, Bakasur and uh, sorry, Agasur and Putana and all, all others. Well, I, I don't know if he associated with them, but he associated with Bana. Bana Sura. Bana, right? 
That was the main Bana Bana is a, like a devotee of Lord Shiva. So he associated with them. And sometimes often the devotees of Lord Shiva, like Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva, you know, they're very attached to sense gratification and sometimes they drink alcohol and they do all kinds of sinful things. So Boma became like that, he became degraded. So much so. So that's the result of bad association. So, yeah, some, so in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes two situations. Somebody practiced yoga for a long time and somebody practiced just for a, not very long. So I think this is a not very long which is being described here. Right? Because it, it takes birth in a family of, well, maybe good brahmanas, family of rich merchants, certainly the rich merchants, as people practiced a short time. But somebody who practiced a long time and still not perfect, they will take birth where? In the family of? Devotees? Yeah, right, in the family of devotees. And Prabhupada explains, he said, just like he, he was born in a family of devotees, and his guru also, Om Vishnupad, Bhakti, Siddhanta, Sarasati, Prabhupada, he was also born in a family of devotees. So this kind of birth is very rare, very special, very fortunate souls. So children born to devotee families, very special, very important to take care of them. Because just the fact that they're born in this kind of family indicates that in their past they must have been very good. They, you know, they did a lot of piety then, but not quite perfect. So that Prabhupada said, when people, Krishna conscious couples, when they want to have a child, they should think that this child will not take birth again that this will be their last birth in the material world. Because they've already, you know, to, to, just to take the birth in a devotee family means that previously they were already quite advanced but not quite perfect. So the, the parents should think that when we have this child, that this child, it shouldn't take birth again. This will be their last birth before they go back to God. So Krishna, Maharaj, yes? Uh, I have a doubt, like uh, uh, the parents who came in the Krishna consciousness in this process, when they have child like 10 years or 5 years, so what about their children? They are like, uh, like in this process before Janma, like how they are... Well, these, these, their children are not born in Krishna consciousness, so it's different. See, what we're talking about people who are actually born, that, you know, the parents already practicing Krishna consciousness and then they have children. But parents who come, the children already born, then it's, it's not the same. Yeah. Thank you, Of course, these children are also fortunate because they're coming into Krishna consciousness early in their life. So that's a, a blessing, it's a good fortune for them, but still it's not quite like the ones who are actually born in the family of devotees. You know, like, of course, Prabhupada's fa family, they were not members of any society or anything, but his father was a pious man and, you know, a strict vegetarian, worshipping the deity and, uh, God made sure his son would play the madanga, got his son trained to play the madanga and harmonium and everything. You know, they were not members of any institution or society, but they were devotees by birth, naturally. So, you know, people like that, you know, you may be also devotee, have been devotees before you joined ISKCON, you were already religious and 
vegetarian and doing everything. But just coming to Krishna consciousness just made the process more uh, solidified, more substantial, more clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go ahead. Madhiji, like to read again? Another Madhiji? Yes, yes. Can I continue, Madhiji? No, a different Madhiji. Give blood. Okay. Directly to principles are such that one who follows them is promoted from the platform of fruitive activities to the platform of transcendental knowledge. After many, many lifetimes of cultivating transcendental knowledge, one becomes perfect when he surrenders unto the Lord. This is the general procedure. But one who surrenders at the very beginning, as recommended in this mantra, at once surpasses all pre preliminary stages simply by adopting the devotional attitude. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 18.66, the Lord at once takes charge of such a surrendered soul and frees him uh, from all the reactions of his sinful acts. There are many sinful reactions involved in Karmakanda activities. Whereas in the uh, Jnana Kanda, the path of philosophical development, the number of such sinful activities is smaller. But in devotional service to the Lord, the path of Bhakti, there is practically no chance of incurring sinful reactions because a devotee of the Lord attains all the good quali qualifications of the Lord himself. What to speak of those of Brahmana? A devotee automatically attains the qualification of an expert Brahman authorized to perform sacrifices, even though the devotee may not have taken his birth in a Brahmana family. Such is the omnipotence of the Lord. He can make a man born in a Brahmana family as degraded as a low-born dog eater, and he can also make a low-born dog eater superior to the qualified Brahmana simply on the strength of devotional service. Hare Krishna. So, Prabhupada begins by talking about this uh, process, the, the different procedures, first of all, beginning with the Karmakandi activities and then coming to the platform of Jnana Kanda. Because Karmakandi activities are material, you're getting temporary results. And very limited and we also hear about all the mistakes which can be made so gradually one will want to do something higher you will not be satisfied with the karma kandi activity you will think about something where we can get more eternal benefit rather than just some material benefit rather than just begging for something material from the lord they will want to go higher so they learn about jnana kanda so the Jnana Kanda, the next stage, but the problem with the Jnana Kanda is it's going to take time, It'll take quite a long time. And Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, Bahum, Bahunam Gyanmanamante Gyanavam Mam Prapadyante Vasadev Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudurlava that after many births and deaths, when one is actually in knowledge, then he surrenders to Krishna. Such a soul is very rare. So we see, first of all, it takes a long time, many births, and not, not everyone is successful. Such a soul is very rare. So it seems to be quite a difficult process. So this is the path of philosophical development. It's going to, that takes time. Although there's not so many, so much danger of offences, but it's going to take more time. But devotional service, the path of devotional service, there's said, practically no chance of incurring sinful reactions. Because a devotee gets all the good qualities of the Lord what to speak of those of a brahmana right just by doing devotional service we develop good qualities the example is there how narada muni 
converted the hunter Magrari. Magrari had been trained by his father to hunt animals and he was trapping animals very cruelly. He would leave them suffering in traps and they would be suffer dying a very slow and painful death. And Narada Muni saw the animals suffering so he gave mercy to Magrari and he instructed Magrari that you're giving all this pain to the animals, in the future you will have to suffer. But Magrari said, well, what can I do? I have to live. This is how I earn my living. So then Narada Muni told him, he said, no, you can come, you just come with me. And N Narada Muni took him to a place in the forest and they made a little ashram and they put Tosi and he told him, you just sit here and chant the holy name and everything will come. And so Magrari was sitting there chanting and he was satisfied, he was provided for because people heard, oh this, there's a hunter, he's become a devotee. So they would all go to see him and they would bring him things, somebody would bring some rice, somebody would bring some fruit, like that. So everything was provided for him. And when Narada Muni came back to see the hunter, then the hunter met, came forward to meet Narada Muni and there were some insects on the path and the hunter got down and he moved the insects out of the path. He didn't want to stamp on them. So a devotee is very careful. Prabhupada writes in one purport in the Bhagavatam, he said, a devotee will hesitate even to kill a mosquito. <laughs> of course, you're lucky. In Bahrain there's no mosquitoes, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, you're very lucky. In India there's a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> anyway, a devotee should hesitate to kill mosquitoes. In other words, we develop good qualities. We care about other living entities. So Prabhupada said, even one may have a very low birth. He may be born in a very low, in a family of dog eaters. So in countries like China and Korea, people sometimes, they eat dogs there. So can they become devotees? Well, they can. They may not have a good birth, but they can become devotees. And we see how many of the people in countries like Philippines and Korea and China, you know, they, they become devotees. They become very nice devotees and they become very faithful and practice very sincerely. But Prabhupada said, one may be a, born in a Brahmana family, and he may have the qualities like a dog eater. One time I was in England and I was doing book distribution and I walked past a shop and there was a man in the shop and he said, he saw me, I was dressed like a devotee and he saw me, he said, look, he said, I'm a Brahmana. He was in the butcher shop. He was an Indian man. He was working in the butcher shop and he had his Brahmana thread on and he was cutting up the meat. He said, look, I'm a Brahmana, but he was working there with the meat, cutting the meat. Huh? So what kind of Brahmana is that? And so there, there's different kinds of, you know, Brahmana birth, birth as a Brahmana is not everything. You have to develop the qualities. And Brahmana means also should work like a Brahmana, do the work of the Brahmana. Brahmana is meant to study the scriptures and teach the scriptures. He can worship the deities and he can teach to worship the deities and he can accept charity and he can give charity. So it's sometimes said in the Kali Yuga now, he said that the Brahmanas today, they're expert in only one thing. They're very expert in accepting charity. They don't do anything else. So this is the fallen situation in the Kali Yuga. So there is a need for properly qualified Brahmanas, devotees. 
So it said, uh, we can develop the Brahminical qualities, go straight to Bhakti. You don't have to go through the Karma Kandi and then the Jnana Kandi. You can go immediately to Bhakti and cultivate the Brahminical qualities, develop all the good qualities. You can even perform the sacrifice that's mentioned in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam by Devahuti. And she describes to her son that even one may be born in a family of dog eaters, but if he even once chants the holy name, or hears the glories of the Lord, or bows down to the Lord, or remembers the Lord, then he, become, he can be qualified to perform a Vedic sacrifice. So this is the verdict of scriptures. This is the verdict of great personalities like Devahuti, the mother of Lord Kapila. She said this. And Lord Krishna also says, Okay, we'll go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, in India, we have too much mosquitoes, but here in Bahrain, we have many cockroaches. So we, we, we need to kill them. So naturally, we are attracting a attracting lot of sinful reaction. But most of the times, we chant Hare Krishna and then kill. Is, will it remove from the sinful reactions or it will keep on adding? All right. Well, the, yeah, that's not the process, you know, to kill, we don't kill creatures, that's not, not allowed, not sanctioned. What Prabhupada would do when there was a, if there was a cockroach, he'd simply throw it out the window and say, go out there and enjoy. <laughs> he said, go and enjoy out there, <laughs> he'd simply throw it out, you know. Yes, so you have to, yeah, what can we do? This, I know these, these things are there everywhere, we get these problems. I had the problem here in my room here, ants, so many ants, oh my goodness, <laughs> so many. Yeah, these, you know, these creatures, they, host, they, host, they have a right to live, you know, we should let them have their life's duration in that body. But if we kill them, then they have to take birth again in that body. It said also there's a hell. There's a spent in the Srimad Bhagavatam said there's a hell where people go who kill small innocent creatures like that. If you kill bed bugs and these kind of things, there's a special hell for people to go. So we should be very careful about killing anything. Hmm. <laughs> what to do? Difficult. But these creatures, they have to live just as we have a right to, we want to live, they also have a right to live, you know. They're born, they're born there in Bahrain, you know. You're not born, you've come to live there. <laughs> mm. Difficult. Okay, let's go ahead. Hare Krishna. Since the omnipotent Lord is situated within the heart of everyone, He can give directions to His sincere devotees by which they can attain the right path. Such directions are especially offered to the devotees even if He desires something else. As far as others are concerned, God gives sanction to the doer only at the risk of the doer. But in the case of devotee, the Lord directs him in such a way that he never acts wrongly. The Srimad Bhagavatam 11.5.42 says, Svapad mulam bhajat priyasya bhaktanya bhavasya hari paresha vikram yaya jodpatita prasidya dunoti sarva radhi sannivishta. The Lord is so kind to the devotee who is fully surrendered to his lotus feet that even though the devotee sometimes falls into the entanglement of vikarma, acts against the Vedic directions, the Lord at once rectifies such mistakes from within his heart. This is because the devotees are very dear to the Lord. Yes, 
And this is interesting point here, how the Lord gives direction from the heart. That, <laughs> and Prabhupada mentions here, he said that sometimes the Lord will, will direct the devotee in a manner different from what the devotee actually wants. <laughs> the devotee may desire something else. Devotee may be desiring sense gratification. <laughs> But the Lord doesn't allow it, He doesn't sanction it. Just like sometimes a child, the child may say, I'm, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so unhappy, I want to kill myself. And he goes to the mother, the child goes to the mother and says, give me poison, I want poison to drink, I want to kill my... And so the mother is not going to give poison, of course. So the same way, the devotee comes to the Lord, and sometimes we pray to the Lord and we are asking the Lord to give us this, give us material enjoyment, give us sense gratification, please satisfy my senses. But Krishna doesn't allow it. Krishna wants to give us pure devotional service. He thinks, why should I give them poison? Let me give them nectar. So he, he puts us through purification so that we can get the higher thing, get pure devotional service. So that is Krishna's special arrangement, how he acts on the heart of a devotee. And then, uh, so Krishna doesn't allow his devotee to act wrongly, he's there in the heart guiding him helping him, short telling him what is the actual path. Okay, someone else read? Prabhu? Another Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj. In this mantra of Sri Isha Upanishad, the devotee prays to the Lord to rectify him from within his heart. To err is human. A conditioned soul is very often apt to commit mistakes, and the only remedial uh, measures to take against such unintentional sin is to give oneself up to the lotus feet of Lord, so that He may guide one to avoid such pitfalls. The Lord takes charge of fully surrendered soul. Thus, all problems are solved simply by surrendering oneself unto the Lord and acting in terms of His directions. Such directions are given to me, given to the sincere devotee in two ways. One is by way of the saints, scriptures, saints, scriptures, and spiritual master, and the other is by the by way of the Lord Himself, who resides within the heart of everyone. Just read that last sentence. Okay, yeah. Do the little scroll. Everyone. Arunakshapu, it's love. Arunakshapu. Everyone. Thus, the devotee is protected in all respects. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Okay, thus the devotee fully enlightened with Vedic knowledge is protected in all respects. Okay, so <laughs> Prabhupada understands or the, 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 the prayer of the devotee. The devotee is praying to Krishna, forgive me for my sins, take away my sins. And Prabhupada quotes this, to err is human. It's natural to make some mistake, to do something wrong. So the devotee prays to the Lord to forgive us for our sins. We want to get forgiven for all the mistakes, all the wrongs which we've done. We've done so many things before coming to Krishna, before submitting ourselves, And even after coming to Krishna, we may have done so many things. So we want to get relief from all of these sins. And by taking full shelter of Krishna, Krishna says, I will free you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. 
right? That surrender. So even we have we've, we've done these kind of things, made some mistakes, but the Lord is there to take to help us to take away these sinful reactions. Prabhupada said, all the problems are solved simply by surrendering to the Lord and acting in terms of his direction. So then Prabhupada then speaks about the direction. Where are we getting the direction from? We have to, we cannot just be independent. It, we, we get direction from the sadhus, the shastra and the gurus. That's one form of direction. Sadhu Shastra Guru and the other is from the Lord Himself in the heart. Of course, our heart has to be very pure to take direction from the Lord Himself. We cannot so much rely on the Lord's direction. But the Sadhu Shastra and Guru, that is something very definite. So we're encouraged to approach more. We need the Guru, we need to read the scriptures, we need to hear from the sadhus, the saints. We have to get this, this kind of association, this kind of guidance. Don't just be independent. So devotee, <coughs> devotees enlightened with Vedic knowledge. No, no, Vedic, Vedic knowledge. We get that from? The sadhu, shastra and the guru. If you hear from the sadhus, and you hear from the guru, you read the scriptures, then you get Vedic knowledge. And that will protect us. If we get the, that knowledge, then we act on that knowledge. We have to follow that, these instructions. And we see in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also does, shows this. In the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes about how he's describing to Arjuna, they're discussing about the soul and the super soul and that is there two or is there only one? And, he, and Lord Krishna says, well, this is discussed in the scriptures and the, the saintly persons, they said, they've discussed this and, and books like Vedanta Sutra have also described this. Krishna quotes the Vedanta Sutra, he mentions Vedanta Sutra or Brahma Sutra. Brahma Sutra it's called. So it's there in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna accepts the Bhagavad, that kind of direction himself. Lord Krishna, although he's the Supreme Lord, he's also accepting the, 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 the teachings of the, the great saints, the great Acharyas in the past. And he's also following the scriptures. So he's not just saying to Arjuna, you have to do what I say, I'm your guru. But he's supporting it all with evidence from, the, from scriptures and from saintly persons. So this is important. And in giving instruction and in giving direction, we don't just only say, I think. But we support it with evidence from the... Vedas and from the, 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 the saintly teachers, the Acharyas. Okay, go ahead. Someone read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Vedic knowledge is transcendental and cannot be understood by the mundane educational procedures. One can understand the Vedic mantras only by the grace of the Lord and the spiritual master. If one takes shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, it is to be understood that he has obtained the grace of the Lord. The Lord appears as the spiritual master for the devotee. Thus, the spiritual master, the Vedic injunctions, and the Lord himself from within. All, all guide the devotees in full strength. In this way, there is no chance for a devotee to fall again into the mirror of material illusion. The devotee is thus protected all around, is sure to reach the ultimate destination of perfection. The entire process is hindered at, in this mantra and Sri ba Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.17-20 explain it further. Okay, okay, just a minute, let's hear. Uh, so, Prabhupada explained, Vedic knowledge is 
transcendental, right? It's transcendental, it cannot be understood by mundane educational procedures. What is mundane educational procedures? What, what's the usual way in which they teach? They learn things in schools and colleges? Yes, Abhidhya. yes, Abhidhya, but what, what, how, do they, how do they generally transmit that information? What's their method and presentation? They're not teaching the spiritualism. Yes, definitely not. Well, what's the difference between the two? What makes it spiritual? What makes it material? Mundane. Prabhupada said mundane educational procedures. Well, huh? Hare Krishna, the Lord Hare Krishna. Am I allowed to, to try to answer? Yeah, you can try. We spoke about the different items of knowledge. Do you remember what was the first item of knowledge? That's from the Bhagavad Gita. They were describing the process of knowledge, 13th chapter, the process of knowledge. How does the process of knowledge begin? No. There's a spec. Yes. Adam 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 Right. Humility. Pridelessness. Humility. Yes. To be humble. To give up. To give up this pride. Generally, people come for education, they're very proud. They think I know everything. So Okay, so the important point is that we have to have this humility because you have to approach the spiritual master, the spiritual teacher. And to approach the spiritual teacher, you have to be humble. You have to submit yourself. Tasmat gurum prapajita jigna sushriyam putama. Right? You have to surrender to the spiritual master. Tadvidi pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya. Pranipatena pari prashnena. You have to submit yourself. Fall down without reservation before the guru. And then he can transmit knowledge, right? To understand Vedic Mandra by the grace of the Lord and the Guru. 
And Prabhupada quotes this Yasya Devi Parabhakti, that meaning you have to have equal faith in both Guru and in Krishna. Sometimes we ask people, do you have more faith in Guru or do you have more faith in Krishna? Right? Who do you have more faith? Do you have faith in, more faith in Guru or more faith in Krishna? Who do you have more faith in? Uttam? Oh, yeah, I have faith in my Guru. Oh, really? Yes. You, then you're a fanatic. You, you're, a, you're a fanatic. How can, how, can, how can you have more faith in the Guru than in Krishna? That's madness. Uh, uh, Maharaj, uh, humble opinion or condition in my life, everything has given my Guru. Either materially or spiritually, everything. But you, sh you should understand what Guru means. Guru means representative of Krishna. How can you say you have more faith in your Guru than in Krishna? That's stupid. Guru is representative of Krishna. So you should say, I have equal faith in Guru and in Krishna. Not that you have more faith in your Guru. That's totally wrong. Guru is, rep guru is representative of Krishna. So it's stated very clearly. Equal, you must have faith in Guru and Krishna. Guru is representative of Krishna. You cannot say, I have more faith in my Guru. That's wrong. You have to have equal faith in Guru and in Krishna. They're not different. Guru is the representative of Krishna. If you say, I have faith, more faith in my Guru than in Krishna, I don't know what you think about Krishna. I don't know, that's something wrong. You're off there. You have to correct that, you have to correct that understanding. You have to understand properly. Guru is representative of Krishna. So equal faith in Guru and in Krishna. Might be time. So we have to understand this important point that education, the process of knowledge begins with Amanitvam, Amanitvam, Adamvitvam, Amanitvam, Adamvitvam. Humility and pridelessness. This is the beginning of cultivation of real knowledge. So, by surrendering to Guru, then we have to develop that humility. We cannot submit ourselves to Guru without being humble. So, it's a, a, it's a purifying process. But mundane education doesn't require that kind of surrender. You know, it's not based... You don't surrender to the teacher. You go to, you go to educate, you may argue with them, you, know, <laughs> you don't listen, you don't... We don't surrender, we don't submit ourselves. They give you work, you don't do it. <laughs> like, you know, we just pay the money and the teachers are all unqualified, as Prabhu was saying, as Uttama Krishna was saying, teachers are all unqualified people. They don't teach by example. And they teach often knowledge which they don't believe in themselves. They don't follow. So, Mundane education has many problems, many faults, many deviations. You know, we, need, we need mundane education, we have to get it, we have to learn basics, but we have to learn also the spiritual knowledge. It's also very important. So, taking shelter of the spiritual master is a very important, important part of the process of spiritual knowledge. One who takes shelter of the spiritual master, then he's on the process of, that's the proper path of process of knowledge, cultivating knowledge. This, and it only happens by the grace of the Lord, by the mercy of Krishna, we get the spiritual master. But we have to take advantage, we have to hear from the spiritual master, we have to follow the teachings given by the spiritual master. And then we gradually we learn the Vedic injunctions. So Krishna is there in the heart and He guides us. He sends the spiritual teacher to us and we surrender to Him, take His instruction. So 
So the, Prabhupada said, there's no chance for a devotee to fall again into the mire of illusion. Right? We've already been through the mire of illusion a long time. We've been in illusion a long time. And when we come to Krishna consciousness, then we're very glad to get out of the illusion. We appreciate how long we've been in this material world, in so much illusion, so many lifetimes. So we're very glad to get this chance to get out of the illusion. We want to come to the perfect stage. The entire process is hinted at in this mantra. Okay, so then Prabhupada quotes Srimad Bhagavatam. Someone like to read that for us? This final section? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. All doubt, as all doubts diminish, he becomes a pure devotee. Okay, so this is Srimad Bhagavatam, second chapter, first canto. Very, very important chapter. Some devotees, they memorize the whole chapter. Very important. Prabhupada often lectured on the second chapter, the verses of the second chapter. And so, describing about the power of hearing and chanting. Hmm? Uh, Maras, can you repeat the source again? The source? Yeah, yeah. You just now said I didn't uh, know. Sorry? No, last paragraph you said from Srimad Bhagavatam. Which canto that is? It's first, first canto, second chapter. 17 to 20. Second chapter, verses 17 to 20. Srinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. Right? Srinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ridyanta Stohya Padrani Vidunoti Suratsatam. That's the first one. Hearing. Hearing by simple hearing the Bhagavatam and chanting the glories of the Lord is an act of piety. You get the benefit of doing pious activities just simply by hearing and chanting the Srimad Bhagavatam. We were talking about pious activities. This is a type of piety which qualifies you to become the friend of Krishna, to become a gopa and to play with Krishna in the forest of Vrindavan. You have to have this kind of piety that you studied the Srimad Bhagavatam, you talked it, you relished it, you were hearing and chanting the Srimad Bhagavatam for a long time and you developed a great taste for hearing and talking about Krishna. So that kind of piety, that qualifies us to enter into Krishna's pastimes. Hmm? Very important. The Lord wants everyone to hear and chant His glories because He is the well-wisher of all living entities. Right? Krishna wants everyone to have that, this opportunity. Not only us, He wants to give it to everyone. He's, Krishna is the best friend of everyone. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says like that, right? Suri Dham Sarva Bhutanam. He's a well-wishing friend of everyone, very dear friend. He's with us. And this is, this is what he wants, why he's with us. He, he wants the best for us. He wants to give us the best, just like you want the best for your children. So Krishna wants to give the best for all of us. And the best for everyone is that let them hear and chant 
about the glories of Krishna. And by doing that, everybody gets great benefit. They get the benefit of all the pious activities. So, Bhagavatam continues, by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, one becomes cleansed of all undesirable things. And then, one's devotion becomes fixed upon the Lord. So this is the power of chanting and hearing. When we do it properly, when we do it without offence, then we get cleansed of all the undesirable things, all the anartas, the things we don't want in the heart. They're all removed by proper hearing and chanting. And when we get rid of all the anartas, then we become fixed. We come to that stage of nishta. Right? So you can see the different stages of devotion being described. The hearing and chanting was taking us through anartha nevriti, getting rid of all the anarthas. And then we come to the next stage, you come to this, you become fixed, nishta. We become steady, fixed in our devotion upon the Lord. And then what happens? At this stage, the devotee acquires the brahminical qualifications and the effects of the lower modes, passion and ignorance, completely vanish. So the brahminical qualifications means the mode of goodness. Mode of goodness means to get rid of the passion and the ignorance. It's very easy for us to become very passionate and even ignorant. The different times of the day, different environments, they put us in the mode of passion and ignorance. They go rushing to work, get in the mode of passion, you're in a traffic jam, passion. The mode of ignorance, you don't have any work. <laughs> lockdown, you're at home, you don't know, nothing to do, you can become, we can become very lazy, very ignorant. So when we want to get rid of that passion and ignorance, we have to come to the mode of goodness. And that means developing the Brahminical qualities. We have to examine ourselves, how much have we developed the Brahminical culture? Do we still get really angry? Do we get really upset at little things? Or sometimes we, do we get very, are we very lazy and dirty sometimes? We have to always keep things clean, keep cleaning. We have to clean the heart. Right? Prabhupada used to say, cleanliness is next to godliness. So keeping everything clean is close become close to becoming godly. So then the devotee becomes fully enlightened by virtue of his devotional service and he comes to know the path of the Lord and the way to attain him. And so you can see coming to the mode of goodness and getting rid of the anartas from the heart, coming nishta, then it's developing, after nishta comes ruchi, we're getting taste. He's, he's, he's developing that attraction, it's, it's so much taste for hearing. So he, he not, we become, we know the path of the Lord and we know how to reach him. Because it, it's so attractive, it's so, it's so, it's drawing all of our attention that we want to go there. So as all doubts diminish, he becomes a pure devotee. That's what we want, right? We want to come to that stage of pure devotion. We want to get rid of all these doubts. For the doubting soul, there's happiness neither in this life nor in the next. So Krishna is addressed as Madhusudan. Just as he killed the demon Madhu, he can kill all the doubts also. Our doubts are like demons. 
Krishna is expert in killing demons, so he can kill all the doubts. We just have to surrender to Krishna and then all the doubts will go. Yeah, we have doubts naturally. In, in the beginning, it's natural to have doubts. But as we go on in Krishna consciousness, we should become more convinced and convinced and the doubts should become less and less. And we can deal with the doubts. We should be able to defeat the doubts ourselves. When doubts come in the mind, we can understand this is just my mind. My mind is thinking sense gratification. My mind doesn't want to surrender to Krishna. So then we take control over our mind. We call out the holy name of Krishna and we beg Krishna, please help me, give me shelter, keep me engaged in your service. And in this way, we are saved from maya. So this is what's required. We're training all of our devotees to conquer the mind. And the best way to conquer the mind, in the arena of japa. Just like in the arena, you know, you, in, the, in the ancient days, they put, the Roman gladiators would go into the arena and they'd fight big lions. So we're fighting our mind in the arena of japa. Every day when we sit to chant or when we start our japa every day in the morning, we're, we're, we have to conquer the mind, train that mind to submit itself and be faithful and chaste and take shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna. So this is the prayer of the devotee here, the final verse, the, pr the devotee's asking to the Lord that please remember all that I've done for you and free me from the reactions to my past sins. There will be no hindrance to my progress because the devotee understands he's preparing for death, he's giving up the body, he wants to be able to go on to continue his devotional service, to continue in our progress in devotional service back to Godhead. So this is the conclusion of our study of the Sri Shopanishad. We'd like to thank all of you for participating today and all the other classes, those of you. But of course you have to write the essay, you have to write the open book essay. Have you already begun? Yes, you have to write one essay and then I'm going to be teaching you also Nectar of Instruction and that will, that, that, will, that will be in December because I have to teach some other Bhakti Shastri classes. I'm teaching two Bhakti Shastri classes so I'm busy for a few weeks there. So after I finish the Bhakti Shastri classes with the people online, then I'll be free. So it will be early December, as soon as I finish. I think, I, I think I'm busy up until about 28th. So somewhere, anyway, we'll fix a date. I'll finalize that with the Gopi Jana of Balaba Prabhu. We'll fix a date and he will notify you and we will have the nectar of instruction and that will conclude your Bhakti Shastri, right? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, so we'll try to finish that before the end of the year, hopefully. <laughs> Beginning in December, shouldn't take too long. Okay, are there any final questions, anybody? Maharaj, I have a request, if yeah. it is possible. Yes. Uh, yes. Is email or? Yeah, I can email. My email is here.
Email is uh, bvvnarasimha at hotmail.com. Yes, B V V Narasimha N A R A S I M H A at hotmail dot com. Okay, Maris. Thank you so much. Yeah, any questions if I can help? You can contact me there. Okay, so I'll leave you now. Thank you all very much for your wonderful service and thank you for kindly thank helping you. me with my uh, computer you. problem. I'm very grateful for that assistance. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So we'll see you, you we'll see you next month, right? December. You can get give, yes, gives you time to finish everything, catch up on all your essays and your slokas and look over the text. Nectar of instruction. You can be ready. Nectar of instruction, the first four. Ishopanishad, the first two. The invocation and mantra one for Ishopanishad. And for, Isho, for Nectar of instruction, Upadeshamrita, the first four slokas. Okay, so Hare Krishna, my humble obeisances to all of you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.